Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play Minecraft Magically Modded series. This is what I've gotten from the cave from last episode. That and this. Quite a lot of saddles actually. Six I think. I spent, I think, end up four and a half hours in the cave and still haven't explored it all. I ran into a mine shaft and stopped there. And it's still all in that area too. Just weep back and forth. There was a ravine in the branch I didn't take from the start and that led to a rather large area. Also I've updated to a new version of Red Power 2 and in that version a uh, mossy cobble will spread to uh, normal cobblestone if it's not in direct sunlight and there's water adjacent to it. So what we're going to do is place a few mossy cobbles around here and see if it will spread around the underwater levels because I think that would look kind of nice for the wall there and for today's episode what we're going to do is be building a docking station and launching station for this end of the Eats Road I may do both ends, but I probably won't be able to do that all in one episode. If I'm not able to fit both ends in this episode, then we'll do the other end in the next episode. It's going to be a little bit more complicated, I think, maybe, because it has a bit more constraints as far as size and stuff goes. just finish placing a couple more of these and we'll get started on that I think just do one more here and another one here and that'll be all not sure if they'll spread if the sunlight is on the side of them like this or if there needs to be some kind of overhang to keep it from spreading but I think as far as the block is concerned it doesn't have direct sunlight but I'm not sure about that I guess I'll find out after a couple hours over here what I was originally going to have happen is have the boats kind of launch out in the air and then splash down into the each road and go I don't know if that's still going to be workable. Mostly you have the problem with the boat can't fit between these two blocks. And it might hit the bottom and break. Or it will hit the bottom, I don't know if it will break. There's also a size consideration. It will have to be longer if I want it to build up speed like that. I don't know, I am kind of enamored with the idea of flying through the air in a boat. So maybe we'll try something. I could change these out to glass panes and then the boat could fit in a short area. But the trajectory would have to be pretty exact and I don't know maybe I could remove the bottom the ice bottom if it bobs up and down it still might break if it bobs back up and hits something I think we're going to have to go to the creative world to do some tests normally I do not like to use the creative world for tests but 
in this instance I'm going to so I'll meet you over there in the creative world now I've built myself a little test pond with red power two pumps about that deep and we have an each road here I can test the launching this way and the docking on that end I may want to build another one going this direction to test the whole system itself but probably we'll do that in the normal world let's get rid of these slimes better as I said I don't like doing stuff in creative partly because doing it in the real world keeps you more conscientious of the resource cost and you don't have to build it twice but I'm going to test one thing at a time here the first thing we're going to test is the landing see if it will hit the bottom and break or not so I'm going to build a quick little launching station and I'll be right back once I've done that okay I built myself a short little each section here and we're going to try launching the boat okay so it comes down right on top of the sign there Oops. and if we go back further here it also comes down on top of the sign I'm going to add one more section of five and see if that speeds it up anymore right now it seems to be going about two blocks per Y coordinate so I'll be right back once I finish this okay we built another section and it's launching and doing the same exact thing interesting so it must pick up its speed pretty quickly let's try this section here just about the same and this one's only four short or three water length and four total for the sign so if we did a five section here it would probably come down the same more or less so I guess I do not need the launching station to be all that far I did kind of want it to arc a little bit more but I guess Minecraft doesn't really do that kind of arc for boats now then let me see what we can try I could try different heights I don't think that's going to improve anything first let's try seeing if it breaks if it hits the bottom coming down on that sign is going to be a problem so I'm going to move that I think but I'll be back once I've created some kind of landing pad here okay I decided just to do a three gap to start with I do not know how that's going to fit that actually worked fairly well without much fuss interesting let's try that with me in it I might want to come back here and do that then Hmm, what did we hit? Maybe it's because we're flying? Let's try that again. That was strange. Let's try it unmanned again. Maybe we bob more if it's manned. And we'll do it from back here unmanned and see if that breaks might be the length it's doing fine 
Earth is not manned. Hmm. Let's try this again up here. Oops. Yeah, right here is good. Oops. That was interesting. When we hit the ice like that, it kept us from breaking. Hmm. That might be a happy accident. It'll give me a clue how to solve this problem. Let's try this again without messing it up. It might have been the speed that caused that. So we could try it from closer. That didn't quite work. What else could we do? We could add some signs here and put a water source in the middle there for us to kind of land into. That might work like that. And maybe, yeah, that should work. Maybe. No, it looks like we're hitting this up here, maybe. Let's try breaking these and replacing them with glass. We might be going slightly faster with it manned, and that is causing the problem. I'm not sure if boats are faster manned like minecarts. That was strange. We seemed to... Hit some. Ah, oh, I did another boat. Okay, that's what happened. Now then. Okay, we are still hitting that. I think that water source is getting in the way, actually. Hmm. Some way to slow my descent some. Let me try that again and get a better look at it. Maybe I'll stop the recording and watch the film in slow motion or something. Okay, that time worked. Let's try that a couple more times. And if it works, I'll be back. If it doesn't work, then I'll keep showing it. Okay, here we are again. All those tests, I did it three times and didn't have any more problems. I'm going to try this again, but this time higher, because there is a little bit of a bob when I was doing it from lower. I do want to see if hitting the bottom comes into play. Interesting, the art seems to have changed for that height. I think it should be going further than that, or maybe I'm wrong. We'll break a couple more and put some more glass panes here. And that should solve any problems with that. We'll see if this breaks now. It seems to be doing fine. Unmanned, anyway. Let's try it again, manned. Also seems to be doing fine. Interesting. I was expecting it to break, but that means I can pretty much have it any height I want it looks like. Which is good for a little bit of convenience when I'm designing the docking part of this because I want to have I don't know the station maybe in the ground level and then have a water elevator going up and then launch you off something like that let's try 
building some kind of docking station now. Going to base the design off of the turn that I did in the each road, which uses um, three blocks, uh, three solid blocks flowing in the opposite direction, like this. If the water's flowing this way, and there is a two gap right here between the sign. So let me go look at that over here I think it is yeah right here this this and this are all source blocks see if I put that there that's a source block and there's another two gap between the sign and the water flowing this way that's how I was getting them to stop or slow down enough to turn without breaking before. So I think I can get them to slow down enough to where they can come into contact with a door or trap door or something like that to slow them down and keep them from continuing on without shattering them when they impact it. Okay, so I'm going to build something real quick and be back in a moment, like I said. Okay, I've got that section built here. Right now I'm just using a uh, ice block here in place of a door or something. Just to act as a hard stop for the boat to run into. And we'll try and see if the boat breaks. If it hits that, I don't think it will, but it might. Do that. Okay, it didn't break. Let's try it with me in it. Again, I do not expect it to break. But boats are temperamental. And okay, yeah, we slowed out nicely for that. I don't think that's going to be any problem. Now then, what I could do is have a sort of water elevator right here going straight up. I thought about it a little bit and I've decided to go with the water elevator method. All these are water source blocks. And this way I can have several boats in a queue here and just pull the top one off as I need it and that'll give me a bit of a buffer for the boats one more thing we really need to do before we go to our let's play world is decide how we're going to launch the boats themselves there's a few different methods I can think of to use. Doors, trap doors, and pistons being the most obvious. So I'm going to build a little sample of each type and try to decide which one I like best. I want it to be easy to get in and out of the boat and it to have a uh, it to be pretty reliable. So I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, I've set up a few tests here. First off, trapdoors. They do not seem to work at all for stopping it going uh, horizontally, but they do work well if you want to stop it going vertically. that's one way we could use those. Next up, regular doors. They work at stopping it, but oops, I think that's going to matter, but there. But you have to be going extremely slow. 
because boats seem to be really fragile when it comes into contact with the doors. Let's try here. Oops. That. We had to slow it down very much before it gets right to here. And that serves as a pretty good launch. Next up we have pistons. Pistons work really well because they can change the water flow. Imagine for instance this is the top of our water elevator there. Oops. Let's see. We can get the boat in here. We may not be able to. Unless There we go. So that's the top of a water elevator. Then we just flip this and away it goes. Works pretty well. That may be what I end up using in the top and the trap door in the bottom. That or the door. Not quite sure yet. It's going to be somewhat of a space issue. One final test we need to do is just to make sure that wooden pressure plates go only work on the um, unmanned boats and the stone ones um, only work on the manned. Or well, these work on both and the stone ones only work on the manned. That's what I mean to say. So let's start with an unmanned boat. Neither worked. Okay, that's interesting. Let's try that. That worked. That worked. Interesting. So only manned boats can activate pressure plates. Hmm. That will make this a little more difficult than I had thought, but I still think we could do something with it. At the very least, it will allow us to easily do the launching and capture without having to have any manual buttons pressed. It will just stop us as soon as it detects our presence. Okay, I think that's all we need to do in the creative world for now. Let's head back over to the Let's Play world and get started on our build. I'll see you over there. Here in the Let's Play world now, we're going to start by kind of building backwards from the actual launch point in the air here. And then we'll come back around and build the capture point from that because I think the launch point is going to be the most complicated probably at least the one that's going to be most dependent on the length of the building so first we're going to build the actual road part and then we'll build a building around that once that gets done I'll start on that now. Okay, I've got this top part done, I think. I have two links with a little extra for the elevator to come up and turn around. So now we can start building the actual elevator part and the bottom part as well. Just come straight in, go up and go around. So I will start on that now and again be right back. Okay, so I've got the elevator built. Goes up. One thing I had forgotten to consider in the creative world was this bend here. A little difficult to get the boat to go around without breaking. So what I'm going to do is a sand block here is going to be a piston and there's going to be another piston right here 
You'll get in the boat here, activate a pressure plate, and retract both these pistons, which will let the next boat come in to stick wait here and send you on your way. If I can get the timing right, that is. So let's test the retrieving end with a few boats. Here. Theoretically, they should all work. Without having any problems. Okay. Exactly how we want. And then, piston retracts. Oops, that did not work at all. Mm, maybe the other boats below it are causing the problem. Now then, if we do the... That. Okay, it works that way. So I'm going to need some kind of trap door down there as well to keep the boats from pushing the guys. And we also know now where we need to land. Okay, I believe I have the circuitry for the top part done at least. So let's look at that. There's a boat up here over a pressure plate being held in place by a sticky piston. Another boat behind it also being held in place by a sticky piston. And underneath that is a line of waiting boats being held in place by a trap door. When you get in that boat it activates this circuit which goes through a knot gate pushes down this piston and sends you on your way. It also goes through a set of two repeaters that is collect, uh, connected to an exclusive NOR gate which goes up to this piston. This has the effect of retracting the piston once, letting the boat through, pushing the piston back up, cutting up the water, and stopping the boat when it hits the ground then it will retract the piston again, the water will start back again and push the boat on its way a little bit further. This will keep the boat from breaking when it runs into this block right here that this piston is pushing up. So let me demonstrate that part. Oh and finally the output from this longest repeater goes through a pulse former that is connected to this trap door to release another boat into the top part there. It appears that that boat got stuck. Let's check that. May have gotten stuck on something. Let's break that and try again. Should have went. Alright, the button doesn't stay down long enough for that part of the thing to work. Okay, I can fix that just by doing it by sitting in it. Let's see. This, there goes the other thing, just waiting on the pressure plate. And, you missed that part. Uh, yet we missed it being pushed back into that. Mm. We'll try it one more time. If that doesn't work, you'll just have to take my word for it. Let's see. We'll try breaking the boat up here once we get past this piston. There it goes. Thing, then it goes again and gets pushed up against that block. Then the piston goes up again and the other boat gets released. And I have room for uh, several boats down here. One per level. So now all I need to do is do the 
bottom part right here. I think I'm probably going to have to change this up to have it another uh, slowdown section back further this way so that the uh, rider can get out somewhere around here because getting out right here would not be very easy. So I'm going to work on that and again be back shortly. Okay, I've got this set up now for the exit part. You just come in like here, hit these pressure plates, the door stops, and you can hop out. Then the boat goes along and goes into the queue. If there's an empty boat coming through, it just keeps on going straight through. The circuit's pretty simple. Just a repeater hooked up to that line, and this pressure plate is hooked up straight to the door. So they are both powering the door. This keeps the door closed if you are going really fast, but it's probably not entirely necessary. Just a little extra precaution. And now I can start actually building the building. I'm going to base it off the fishing hut because I kind of like the way it looks. Try to hide as much of this stuff as possible. Probably change the blocks used in the um, each road on the stuff inside to wood or something have some stairs here and I think I'm going to use a piston elevator like right about here to get into the boat up there so I'm going to start on that and I will see you again shortly lots of shortlies this episode well, it is finished. I've got the building built here and the entrance for the output here with the zipper tower. Boat right here. And let's see if we hop in the boat, get along this way. And I'll be back to show the coming in. Heading back in now. We have two pressure plates here to stop us. And then if we just hop out, the boat goes on its way into the um, queue that we have set up. And then we have these doors right at the top of the stairs we can walk out. And that is that. So next episode we're going to do the boat launch for the other end. But that's going to be all for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.